So this is the um, dinghy adventure. <laughs> Stefan did such a good job anchoring the dinghy. You're so thorough with the stern anchor. I think you can grab it, maybe. I think you can grab it, maybe. Grab the cord. Grab the cable. Oh! So much So he wanted the stern anchor to keep the dinghy straight because when we left, there were all kinds of fishing boats and they're all gone now. Um, but it's quite high. What's he gonna do? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Good thing you have your bathing suit on. Get it! Get it! <laughs> Got it! Victory! Woohoo! Except now you forgot the key. How am I gonna give you the key? Oh man, so he's got to bring the dinghy around here. They're building this new dock. And I'll get in on the short side. Barely made it, but you did! So what we're going to do tomorrow... So, before I tell you where we are, let's go back a couple of days to see just how we got here. We'll try to make it about 73 nautical miles-ish. 70 plus to get all the way to St. Vincent. So we're going to try to do that and spend one night here uh, and then we'll see. Either we'll try to go to Tobago or we'll spend another night to go to maybe a uh, Union Island or something and uh, or if we stop in St. Lucia so we'll do this. Um, now uh, well, we need to focus on getting fuel and checking out, but the big decision is um, if we commit to go past St. Lucia and to anchor to the next island, I forgot the name. St. Vincent. St. Vincent. Then maybe we have to decide do we go east or west of St. Lucia. Advantage and disadvantages, but so we'll have to make that call when we see the wind outside, the angle mostly. Yep, so we're just going to go in and get some fuel and check out. So we're sailing. We left Martinique, take two. What plan have we come up with? So I'm feeling a little queasy. Um, but So I'm trying not to look at the screen anymore for a minute. So basically, we're going to have a day sail and stop in St. Lucia. And, um, you know, if you read everything on Navionics and No Foreign Land, it's, you know, people get boarded with machetes and like steal all your money and there's a bunch of reports. So, you know, of course the like risk aversion me is like, okay, let's not stop there. But there's been a number of recent postings that have said, you know what, I, we met with this guy, J Jaleel, and they gave the WhatsApp number and um, he kind of makes sure to help you get your mooring ball. He takes you to check in and check out. He makes sure you're safe. I guess he does tours and arranges other things and uh, does a water taxi so you don't have to get your dinghy down. Um, so we're going to try it. So that's what's going on. Okay, so we went from let's go to Tobago straight to looking at all the options. And I think we're still in the mode of like passage mode and optimizing things from a sending point of view um, at the expense of like cruising. So it's kind of a test trial for uh, for next season. Uh, we're doing day sailing. We're not trying to optimize <laughs> too much, but we're catching up with those boats that left ahead of us. If we could have left early this morning at daylight, it would have been a good option. But uh, we needed to check out, we needed to get some fuel. Of course, there were people already at the dock at 8 o'clock, so we had to wait. But anyway, all is good. Uh, debated going on the eastern side of the island because uh, 
uh, the wind was very favorable but um, we considered sailing through the night but if we stopped in the Grand Dean, I mean um, we arrive at 2 in the morning so that's not good too for anchoring either so we'll do uh, three hops to get to Tobago that's the plan and uh, let's see how that goes and just enjoying the day okay scratch that plan that uh, three hop thing we talked about we've changed our mind so we're definitely committed next season this coming winter to do uh, day sails stop cruise slow down but i guess this season we cannot so here's the new plan um i had a hard time because the wind is like 70 degrees so slightly above east so the condition and we have like 10 12 knots i mean it's like perfect to sail down south so instead of doing stops we are now going straight for um tobago so i'll show you our overall route so martinique is here so we left martinique uh, this morning at nine o'clock uh, with this new plan we decided to sail on the east side of all this island and uh, so you'll see our little change of course <laughs> and um, we are going to be sailing along the coastline i'll explain why later uh, through these islands at night but there is a nice safe passage and then we'll come out um, in between those those islands the mustic and I uh, forgot what this one is and then we'll see what the what the current does yeah either we'll start heading straight for uh, Tobago or we'll keep sailing south a little bit and then head later for Tobago let me explain the I'll show you the the current if I'm applying the current to a route so we have our two routes so the reason we're not sailing straight uh, to Tobago is because we have about two knots of current in there so we're going to be sailing along the coastline to avoid uh, the strongest current basically we don't want to sail straight to Tobago because of the strong currents here so we're going to be sailing on the east side of those islands find where there's a little bit less current and start um, bending of course toward Tobago and here we will be in the, in the shadow of this island for the wind and the angle of the wind is also pretty good so right now we're sailing under Genoa we have a reef in the main we could definitely check it out uh, but it's already uh, one o'clock in the afternoon so uh, and we'll probably sail with a reef in the main for the night um, but as we keep bearing away uh, on the east side of St. Lucia at some point it's going to be Code 65 territory we haven't used the Code 65 since we furled it before we arrived in Georgetown, the Bahamas so I'm going to rig it up and uh, the rest of the afternoon as soon as we can unfurl it we're going to unfurl it, probably sail it maybe we'll fill it before the night maybe we'll continue uh we'll see but we're going to make some um, good headway uh, that's the plan because there are the right angle the right waves and the right right wind we should arrive if everything goes well so we'll have a night at sea and we should arrive like midday tomorrow uh, in tobago so big picture uh for us uh again again people might be uh, wondering why are we skipping all these beautiful islands and St. Lucia and why are you not stopping and this is a very valid question we're favoring uh, we have a haul out in Trinidad by July 3rd once we're in Tobago uh, so there are a couple of reasons we want to do this once we're in Tobago it's going to be the waves the wind the current will be with us to go to Trinidad so we'll be able to find a weather window fairly easily uh, the challenge is to get to Trinidad it's best to go to Tobago um, as opposed to sail straight from Grenada to Trinidad because you're going to be facing some um, current and, and wind so we are favoring that also Tobago is a little bit out east 
So it makes sense as you sail south to Trinidad to try to get to Tobago um, and then visit Tobago because when you're leaving Trinidad, you have the current against you and the wind against you. So you're probably skipping Tobago. So that's the goal that we get there as early as possible. That will give us two weeks in Tobago to discover this island um, off the beaten path. And, and then next year, it's promised, we'll be back in St. Lucia. We'll spend more time in all these beautiful islands. Ah, I feel like a new man took a shower at the back of the boat because uh, I feel like I just did CrossFit. Rigging a new sail is a bit of work in those temperatures under the sun, but this is the reward. Code 65 is back. Uh, it's been since uh, probably end of February that we haven't used it. Um, we're sitting on the back side of St. Lucia. So I'll give you a review of the some cloud cover. Um, so the wind roughly is like 70, but the land is probably impacting um, the wind as well because we went from 70 average to at 1.20, so quite far north. Um, so right now at the moment we're even in um, A2 territory. But you know, like you, you spend the whole time sweating in the sun, rig the sail, and then you're like, ah, no, because um, as expected, as we're coming from towards the south of the island, uh, the wind came down from 20 to 50 right now. I wouldn't be surprised, like, by the time we get uh, to the south end, we're back in the 70 ish. So we'll be able to, uh, right now we're setting a good angle, leaving the stronger current. It's not super strong right there, but leaving the current on the port side. Set Lucia on the starboard side. And then we're going to sail south southeast towards the next, uh, next island, uh, St. Vincent. We're going to uh, continue to do this and we'll carry the Code 65 as long as we can. And at some point we'll probably go back to uh, Genoa. Look at that bowl. A <laughs> little seasick, but she's still up to feed the to feed the crew. Yeah, that's about it. What's uh, what's on the agenda? Well, I took a hay fever medicine because I was I had really bad hay fever. So I don't want to take a sturgeon, sturgeon, however you say it, for a seasickness because I can't get a straight answer from the internet on drug interactions. Um, so I'm just fighting through it. And since Stefan decided to take the long way, <laughs> hopefully I'm better for night watch. So. Oh, buddy. Okay, she's going to take a little short nap, but I had to wake her up to um, unfurl and hoist and unfurl the Code 65. Uh, full main. We still have our stay sail rigged, hoping we don't have to use it for that trip, that leg, but uh, it doesn't look like it. So right now, I mean, it's, uh, we don't have strong winds, we have like 12, 13. So the nice thing is, um, even though it's uh, not going to be a favorable angle to head towards Tobago, uh, we we'll, should be able to carry the full Genoa, full main, so we should continue to make good progress. We'll, uh, we'll see, but right now this is pretty special. I mean, this sail is a beauty and it's nice to see it again. It's not the perfect angle, We're like a true in angle 140, uh, but don't feel like rigging the A2 uh, because it's going to be short-lived. As you can see, we rigged the preventer. We hadn't used that preventer since we, um, I think since we crossed the Atlantic. The waves are making the sails, or well, the main, go right and left. So 
it quiets everything. Sun is going down and right here we see the beginning of St. Vincent. Enjoy your Father's Day evening with your daughters and sons and I will enjoy my evening and night at sea thinking about um, our children. So have you assume position <laughs> for for your night watch? Assuming position for your night watch. Are yes. you are you putting me on night watch? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just asking if that's your night watch position. I don't feel crummy when I lay down. Yeah, seems to feel better. I don't know, better. Is the right word. Just smiling again. I'm trying to. Uh, share this little moment with the moon Ooh, uh, we filled the code 65 took it down and filled the genoa so we are full main full genoa we're sailing um, 10 11 knots boat speed and speed over ground too so we were like cooking we filled the Genoa to reef. We uh, took a reef in the main and decided for now to uh, keep uh, the two reef in the Genoa and the one reef in the main. We're moving nicely and it seems like the wind is gradually coming back at least to 90 degrees. So we'll take that. Good morning everyone. The sun is already up. But that looks like a pretty big cloud with a squall over there yeah I can see the the water so maybe we'll turn the radar back on and monitor we're sailing south we want to do more southeast and also we know um, right now the wind is like 70 degrees true wind direction right now we're trying to sail well, we're trying to go fast south, leave that huge band of uh, current um, a little bit more to our port side. We want to make it to Tobago before dark. That's what we're trying to do. The night was a little, well, not too complicated, but uh, at one point I re-rigged the Code 65. Uh, we we're, were ready to hoist it and, uh, of course, by the time you're done, um, then things changed and decided to just um, hold and I think that was the right decision but now I'll have to put it away I guess we should have not unrig it the first time around we found um, uh, an area where they have uh, mooring balls um, it's pretty deep uh, some people are carrying 20 meters of water uh, since we don't know the area, we decided to uh, get a mooring ball. Plus, it's good. It's for um, it's a non-profit. Uh, they seem to be well maintained. It's, it helps a good cause at the same time. So happy to do that, and it's going to help us. And we'd like to get before dark, but that's going to be tight. Got a rainbow. We're trying to avoid this blob here. So. We're thinking about maybe tacking. I'm feeling a little bit better, but I can't exactly wake up. Uh, that's the problem with seasickness, is I just get super tired. And Stefan's left to his own to deal with everything. I feel really bad about it. But he's been a champ on no sleep. But he's got to do the dirty job. <laughs> You wanted a boat, here we are. <laughs> That's the thing we're trying to avoid. But the current's kind of pushing us in that direction. We just furled the Genoa. Oh, pretty rainbow though. I don't know if you can see those waves. They're coming from the port side. 
So we have a little bit more wind than um, forecasted. So we uh, put the stay sail. We're uh, sailing uh, 50 through an angle. Uh, at times we have um, 18, 20 through in speed. We have one reef in the main. And we started to get headed. But, uh, it's like 35 nautical miles away. But in the distance, uh, we can see the island of Tobago. Yeah, nothing is easy. Um, it was definitely forecasted to have a lot less wind and I thought it would be a pleasant uh, sail with uh, full main Genoa all the way. Right now it's like 11 o'clock in the morning local time. Um, so we have a few more hours of sailing or a whole afternoon of sailing I guess. Well, we just avoided an almost crisis. Um, we were approaching Tobago and um, we saw like a fishing boat bobbing around so he, did, he wasn't moving so we had to kind of move and then um, suddenly farther up away from the boat we spotted luckily a little buoy with tons of fishing line on it and we had to um, tack really really quickly so we blew the horn twice they didn't respond and then we realized oh, okay they are like bobbing around and fishing then you spotted a red buoy in front and we thought it was not connected, we were going to just bear away. And then I heard them yell and we were whoa, whoa, whatever. Oh, and you then, did hear him yell? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't the know that. The guy yelled and waved his arm. Oh, okay. But just like, as we were like really, really close. Oh man, that was so close. So we close. connected the dots like between their boat and the red buoy, there was a line. So that was like... Yeah. And then we had the stay sail, so we had to fill the Genoa tag, probably avoided the... Uh, going over their line by, I don't know, a couple of wood lengths. Yeah, tacking isn't easy because we have the stay cell up, so we have to actually furl and unfurl. So, yeah. um, good practice though. Well, we made it to Tobago. Another night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Will yeah. Will it be the last night at sea for this season? Oh, it will be. Uh, that's awesome. I'm so happy. Is it? Yeah. We never know. I'm so happy. Yeah, is it? We don't actually know because plans change. Oh, it's really pretty over here. Wow, look at that. Very green. So we're not entirely sure what the deal is uh, with Tobago and Trinidad. A lot of people um, have talked about the crime. Um, but a lot of people have said it's really great. So. I think where we are. We're in the northern part of uh, Tobago. Seems like a little fisherman village, so should be okay, but... We'll find out. Goal was to get here before dark. I think tonight we'll sleep well, because last night was, uh, it was a nice night sailing, but it was busy. Yeah. And there's our Q flag. Next to all of our other flags that are just absolutely wrecked. So since the check-in is after hours, we have to pay extra, which is fine. Um, but we go in tomorrow morning at 9.30 and check in.